Hi there! Welcome to the Science Maker Lab Lesson 5. I'm James, and along with the other Maker Lab assistants, Matea, Julia, and Nick, I'll be your host for this lesson. In this lesson, we're going to learn about the spline tool in SOLIDWORKS. This is a two-dimensional line drawing tool, but it's more complex to use than the other 2D tools, so we want to spend a few minutes going over the basics of when and how to use it. To make a lot of our curved shapes, we will often use mathematically defined shapes like constant radius curves, parabolas, conic rows, and the like. We saw those types of shapes when we learned about the fillet tool options. But there are times when we need a more organic shape than these mathematical curves can define. That's when the spline tool comes into play. A spline is a curvy line that lets us lock in several points along its length. This gives us much more control over the curvature at any given point and the angle at which it meets other entities. To understand a spline, it's helpful to first understand what spline points do. Spline points are points that the curve passes through that we fix into static positions on the drawing plane. Because they're fixed, we'll often interchange the term node or nodal points for the term spline point. Let's start by taking a regular straight line and making a zigzagging line by giving it multiple endpoints at different points in space. It's like pulling a string tight as it follows a path from one nail to the next on a board with several nails in it. This technique results in a straight line between the nodal points. But if we were to take a springy piece of steel, like a stiff guitar string or a piece of music wire, and root it around nails or pegs, it will curve from node to node, bowing out beyond the straight line, like the music wire in this photo is doing. The pegs serve the same function as our spline points do in CAD. So if we return to SOLIDWORKS and draw a spline over top the zigzag line we just drew and snap it to each of the nodes on that line, it'll give us more a series of parabolic curves instead of straight lines. Note that a spline set between only two points yields a straight line. Each of the points that we set is a fixed spline point. SOLIDWORKS mathematically smooths the path between these points and we get a similar result to what we saw with our music wire example. We'll change the two lines to different colors to make them easier to see. Now we have seen how a basic spline gives us a path between nodal points, much more like how a car would drive through them at high speed than how our rigid straight line tool drew the path. We can also see that in this model, our spline points are also inflection points where the curvature reverses direction. One of the cool features about SOLIDWORKS is that we can modify things after we draw them. The first way we can do this is by relocating our spline points. When we draw a spline where we haven't fixed all of the spline points to some reference point, we are free to move them. With the sketch tool deactivated, but with the drawing still in sketch mode, we can click on any non-anchored spline point and drag it to a new location in space and slide it back and forth along the spline. We'll play with that a bit so we can see what happens. That was kind of my specialty when I first started learning SOLIDWORKS. Another tool that's available to tune the shape of a spline after the fact is the ability to add or subtract spline points to or from the spline. To add one, we right click anywhere on the spline and activate insert spline point in the pop-up menu that appears. We can then click anywhere on the spline to add a new spline point. We can continue to add more spline points in this way until we press escape to exit the insertion tool. Once out of insertion mode, we can drag these spline points around to fine-tune our shape. More spline points give us finer control of the shape, but also give us more inflection points and puts them closer together, so the curve becomes more difficult to keep smooth. If we want to give up some control to get a smoother line, we can delete one or more spline points by clicking on a spline point and pressing the delete key, or selecting delete from the pop-up that appears. SOLIDWORKS being SOLIDWORKS, of course, we've got even more control available to us to set the shape of this curved line. So far, we've let the CAD decide how the line curves around each point, but we can actually take control of that if we need to. If we remember from CLAD Lesson 2, a tangent is a straight line that just touches a curve and is at the exact same angle as the curve at that point. If we right-click on the line, we're going to get those lines at each spine point 
with harrow heads on each end. These are called spline handles, and as the name implies, we can grab them to manipulate our spline. If we drag one of the endpoints and move it towards or away from the spline curve, we can see that it adjusts the angle of our spline at that spline point. We can also stretch it out away from the spline point, which moves the curve towards the next spline point out further from the one that you are adjusting. Moving it closer has the opposite effect. It will take some experimentation and practice to get good at using these controls to get our splines to do what we want them to do. The final spline hack we're going to touch on here is dipping into our set relations tool to help control our capable but wild splines. Say we're making a canoe like we will in Lesson 6a. We'll make a simple block-shaped canoe to illustrate this trick. Okay, so we've got this blunt end on this otherwise curvy organic shape. We want to put a sort of parabolic shape at the end to make our canoe slide through the water easier. If we draw a sketch using a perpendicular center line to extend the front and run a three point spline from our front vertex through to the end point of our center line, we get a nice parabola at the front. If we zoom in where the parabola meets the existing shape, there's a sudden change in angle. It's not a lot, but it's enough to make our canoe look like it was put together from parts that didn't quite fit. To fix this problem, we can press and hold control and then select our spline, and then also select the edge of the shape we want to continue the angle from. Our Line Properties toolbox will open up. We'll select Tangent and then apply the relation that these lines must be tangent to one another where they meet. That smoothed out the top, so we'll repeat it on the bottom. We'll close up our contour and extrude this sketch to the same height as the pre existing portion. Well, that was pretty quick. We now know the basics of using splines. We're not going to lie, we don't know if it will ever feel completely natural, but eventually with enough practice, we all figure out how to use these things to get the natural flowing shapes we want. And that's it for Lesson 5. We'll see you next time.